Hello and welcome back to Steam with Steve. Today we're going to talk about a really important concept inside of Python, which is scope. So scope determines where a variable um, pulls its data from when it's been stored in memory. And it's really important that we understand that there's four different levels of scope. So let's unpackage that just a little bit at the start. So at the very core, right down the bottom, there's the local scope. Then there's an enclosing scope, a global scope, and then the built-in scope. Now it's really important that we understand those four different levels. So the built-in scope is any um, variable that is built into Python. The global is anything that's inside of the whole script. The enclosing would be inside of a function or inside of some sort of control structure. And then a local is inside of that control structure. So it might be inside of a function and then there'd be a, a loop inside of that. And that would be the local variable. So for example, if you build a x, uh, four x in range, that x variable is the local bit. And then that's what's searched first, then la enclosing global, and then the last at the very top. So we need to understand how these different levels of scope work. I'm going to uh, play around with a few different functions to see that. It should be a bit of fun. And it's really, really helps to understand how this works because then your programming will become that much better. So some learning intentions for today. We're going to understand the concept of scope in Python and distinguish between local and global variables. We're going to master function creation and usage, including nested functions. So that's a function inside of a function. And then apply proper indentation to control the flow of the program. We're then going to identify and um, correct some common gotchas in Python pro functions. So here's the different namespaces that we have. So you have a local namespace, which is right down the bottom, which includes, includes your enclosed functions. So local and enclosed. Then you have your global function, and then you have your built-in namespace, which is all the fun, um, the variables that are built into uh, Python when you start it off. So scope, if we think of it, it's not just a sniper scope. Uh, it's the extent or range or view or the outlook application operation and effectiveness. So if we look at a function, what we're looking for is where does the scope occur? So how, do, how does list one in this particular function get accessed? Well, it's above, isn't it? So it's not down inside the function, it's inside the, the, um, the, the whole of the function above it. So that's where we have to understand how this scope works. So if we have this function, let's um, pause the video there, have a think what actually happens. If you're not sure, have a go and build it and see what happens happens. Cool. So let's have a go inside of um, our own little bit of um, idle. So we're going to go back to our testing ground. I'm just going to delete everything there. And we're going to go def my func. And we're going to use n snaky byte. And we're going to go total is equal to zero. Then we're going to go for i in range of n snaky byte. Total equals total plus one. Then we want to return the total. And that's the end of the function. And this is why I love PyCharm again. So we can see what def is attached to everything that's inside of this. And now let's print off my func with the four put into place. Oops, sorry, this is all Python. So we're going to wrap that up in brackets. Press play. So we get four. So my func four uh, takes n as equal to four, jams it in, does the total range of four, one plus one plus one. And if we iterate through that, let's see what actually happens. So if we go print, Total at each stage, we can see that it started at zero, then one, then two, then three, then four. Cool. So then we've got another um, flow of control. So we've got our cell to far again, little function, and we've got cell to far, make the message the temperature is uh, string temp. So, and then we've got for temp C in 1922 and 21. Temp F equals C to F of temp C, the message, make the message, temp C F, and then print the message. So let's see what happens if we build this guy. So we go def C to F of an input of 
control C. I'm then going to print out C F and return C divided by 5.0 times 9 plus 32. We're then going to def the make message for temp. Oops, I just got a slinky byte. And then I'm going to print out make message. And then we want to return the temperature is plus str temp. And the last one, we want to use these two functions together. So we're going to go for. And we want to go temp C in square brackets, 19, comma 22, comma 21. We're going to iterate through all of those. Then we're going to go temp F equals C underscore two underscore F. Temp C. And then for message equals make message. And then we want to print out the message. So let's save that. This is a run. Cool. So what we should have seen, C to F, make the message, the temperature is 66 degrees. Then it's gone through and uh, changed that. The temperature is 71.6. And then the temperature is 69.8. So it's done a little um, function that controls how many steps that it needs to do each time. So it goes through, makes the message 66.2. 71.6 and then 69.8. So indentation is really important here. So if we play around with this and make this match this, what you'll see is we've got that, that, but then if I mess that up and then push that back there, and then I run the system, you'll see that it will only print out the message at the end after it's done the loop. So that indentation there is super important, which is what um, that bit's trying to see. Now, if we're using Pyche, uh, IDE like PyCharm, like I said, it becomes really obvious what's part of loops because of rainbow brackets, a uh, rainbow indentation, sorry. So as you indent, you can see these different levels below, which makes it really, really useful. So that gets printed. And then the last one, because the indentation's off, it doesn't work. So let's build this one. So have, just pause the video, have a go at building it and see what happens. Make sure you use print with the brackets. Cool. So here we go. We're going to go for i in range brackets 1, 10 plus 1. Snakey byte. Fact equals 1. And then we're going to go for j in range 1 plus i plus 1. Snaky byte. So this is a loop inside of a loop. Fact is now equal to fact um, times j. So I'm trying to see what happens with that there. So we go print c. Run it, we get all zeros. Right, so what happens has happened there? Well, fact is um, set to one, then it goes through this process of times in by um, j each time. So the idea is this should be um, factorial. So it's gone one, two, times three, times four, times five, times six, and so on. So this is like the exclamation mark next to a number. And the number gets quite big quite quickly, which is pretty cool. So this is um, a factorial algorithm, which is really, really neat. And then if you look at the indentation, that's where the lines are. So this code 
the for loop is attached inside here. And then once that for loop control goes, it goes back up the top and then the factorial function executes from there. If you indented it wrong though, so if you indented it here, let me run it, it still works. So we get one more one, two, Yeah, yeah, there we go. So it goes through each iteration each time that it's going through. So it doesn't give the actual factorial, it gives the um, process as it's trying to calculate the factorial. Cool. So now we're going to do the gotchas with the local variables. So we're going to try and build this again. So we're going to go another Celsius function, um, Fahrenheit function. So we're going to def c to f to c. And then result equals C divided by 5.0 times 9 plus 32. And then we're going to return the result. Then we're going to go temp f is equal to C underscore f 19. And then we're going to print out that result. result doesn't exist. So what's that about? Well, if we look at it, result only exists inside of this function. So it's a local variable. So once this function has been executed, which happens here, this result doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. And then that's what happens behind the scenes. So the idea, the mistake, that's what um, happens here is the result doesn't exist. So this is a global scope because this is everything that's running inside of the main line sort of the function. And then this is a local scope because it's local inside of that function. So that's really important. That's the distinguish um, factor between local and global. Have a pause, try and build this one. Cool, let's go, here we go. And this is also one thing that I love about PyCharm. It, it's going, I don't understand why is that there? and does understand the reference as well. So ref result is not defined. It gives you a whole heap of feedback that should be pretty obvious why that didn't work. So let's delete that. Let's go def normal underscore pressure, pressure, snaky byte, and then go result equals pressure minus pressure at sea level. And then you can see how it's already under underlying it because it doesn't know where that exists. So it's waiting to sit, work that out. Then you return the result. And then down here, we're gonna define pressure underscore at sea level. Let's set that equal to seven. And now that error is gone, hasn't it? So then we wanna print out normal underscore pressure. 16 jammed into it. Press, press play and you get nine. So we've gone 16 minus the seven and then it's been able to do it. So this is at a global level. This is at a local level. So when it doesn't know what the pressure is here, and this is what I love about, see how I um, highlight the box that shows where it's referencing it from, which is why it is really cool. I've also got to reformat that. So pep8 standard. Cool. So how does this work? Because of global scope. So local and global scope, when Python encounters a variable, it first checks to see if it's at the local scope. If it's there, awesome. It goes, yep, that's the one I'm going to use. And then if it isn't, then it tries to check the level above it at the global scope. So we try and avoid this feature. We try and keep global variables only working at global and passing them into functions. So then we can sort of understand where the flow of control happens. But sometimes this just is one of the, the better options to do. So underneath this, we're then going to do the local variables. And then look at that. So let's change this around a little. Pause the video, have a go, build that and see what happens. So now I'm going to go pressure at sea level. Equal to seven. 
result is equal to that. Get rid of this. Still goes. We're working awesome. So pressure at sea level. Now this is a local scope, and then this is the local scope, and then it's um, going to give you the right answer with inside of it. So this is a better way of doing it. We don't like using um, pressure out outside. You can then have confusing variables. So have a go playing this out. Pause the video and then see what happens. So we're going to go depth ATM underscore to M bar of pressure. We're then going to return pressure times 1013.25. Then going to depth M bar underscore two mm hg with pressure then we're going to return again pressure times 0 0.7506 or 006 then we're going to use pressure a whole heap of times so we're going to go pressure is now equal 1.2 pressure e equals ATM underscore two M bar of pressure. Then pressure equals M bar underscore two underscore M H G of pressure. And then we want to print out pressure. Holy dooly. Cool. So you've got a function here that uh, changes atmosphere to M bar. And that function here goes M bar MMHG. And then you have pressure is equal to 1.2. You change pressure. From ATM to M bar, and then label as pressure again. Then you change it again and put it as pressure, and then you print out pressure. So it's going to work, but it is very confusing. What the heck is going on here? So what is the pressure, and why is that working? So a better way is to actually label the thing. So it's fine to keep pressure inside of the function because that's a local scope, but then at a global level, to keep it a bit clearer, to say what it is. So this up here, instead of saying pressure, we go in atmosphere or ATM. This one down here, instead of pressure, we're going to go in M bar. So then that converts it. And then we want to change that in MMHG. So instead of printing out pressure down the bottom here, we then print out MMHG. Still code works. Oh, sorry, instead of pressure, sorry, we use the function in ATM, the atmosphere, and then in M bar. So now, if I run this, it should now work, and it's a little bit more obvious what is actually happening inside of this code. Cool. So have a look at this code, pause the video, and think if there's anything wrong. So let's actually build it and see what happens. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go def c underscore to f c stanky byte. And I'm going to print out c divided by 5.0 times 9 plus 32 brackets. And then down here, I'm going to print out c underscore 2 underscore f of 19. Done. And I get a none on this interesting. So why would I get a none? So it's printed out this, so it's done the conversion for 19, but then it'll try to print out again a value. Now here's an interesting feature with um, Python. If you have a function that has no return type, by default, it actually gives back the none value. So that's a pretty simple, straightforward um, thing to um, unpackage there.
So why no return value? Um, it's very good practice usually to use return here instead. So generally we don't use print inside of functions. We should always probably use the return value. So with the original functions that we did back here, instead of saying print, 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 we're gonna go return, 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 and then it's gonna go through and return each one. So I'm gonna cheat and bring back that code. Which we have here already. Instead of having it like this, what we're gonna do is make this new function, def atm, to um, hg, I'm gonna put in the pressure. And then what happens is, we're gonna get rid of the original um, value of atmosphere, indent this, indent this guy, get rid of that, put in pressure, get rid of that, Put in pressure. And then we're going to return in underscore mmhg. And now what we can do is return atm underscore two mmhg open bracket and put a five in. So this is a bit more of a cleaner way of doing it. And then you can see, here's this function, here's this function. And then here's the global um, version down here, sort of working with those functions. So instead of having to play at a global level, it's handled at all at um, local levels, which is really, really cool and super useful. So local scope and global scope to revisit it. Um, when, Py when Python um, encounters a variable, it will first check to see if the variable is defined to the local scope. Then it checks to see if the variable is defined at the next outer scope. Then checks to see if the variable is defined at the most um, most outer scope. So it goes one more further version. And it keeps checking those scopes until it's outside of every single function. And then it checks at the global scope. So some conclusion things to think about. How would you explain the concept of local and global scope to someone that's new to Python? Can you imagine a real life scenario where functions within functions might be useful? And how does the proper indentation influence the execution of your Python code? So have a really good think about that. Hopefully that's helped giving you um, some ideas about functions and then some really good function, um, sorry, scope practice here at W3 schools. So click on the link there and hopefully you can find it. And there is also the code as always. So hopefully that's giving you an idea of what the scope is. So those four different layers that happen. So at the local level, then the enclose, then the global, and then the built-in function. If you've enjoyed this video, please um, give me a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please pop them in the, down below. More than happy to try and help. Um, again, my passion here is trying to make sure that Python's available for everyone to have a go at and practice and learn how to code, which is really, really cool and lots of fun. And yeah, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Um, really appreciate it. See you next time on Steam It With Steve. Adios.